Get away from my straw. Hello and welcome to my channel, Haley Marie Vintage. Today I am actually going to sew up the oldest pattern I own. Oh, you have something to say about that. But this here is Hollywood pattern 1675. This pattern, I believe, was printed in 1938, which is the oldest pattern I own. It's not really that old, but it is decently old, and it is a, like, nice little button-down. I guess I could read the description. Princess Frocker house coat in instep or shorter length. Set bodice sections really soft bust fullness and the front buttons from neck to hem, long fitting sleeves or short puff sleeves. I'm going to do the short sleeves and I'm going to do it with a collar with lace as well as the little sleeves with lace. I am very intrigued by these sleeves. They're a really interesting looking shape. And I also like the way the buttons are on this. I'm really excited to make up this pattern. I've been wanting to make it up since I got it, but I just haven't had the chance yet. And the fabric I'm going to be using is this, it's a Rifle Paper Co fabric I really love their patterns and it has like they're like little strawberries I guess on it that are orange I like them because as I always say I don't love red so I always love a different colored strawberry and these actually kind of remind me of salmon berries they're kind of more of a local fruit so I'm really excited and I love Rifle Paper Co so that is kind of what we're up to today I don't anticipate anything too tricky about this pattern aside from I expect the instructions to be relatively different because it's from an earlier decade than most of the ones I work from it is a directional pattern so I do have to be careful when I cut my pieces but other than that yeah this should be straightforward so we're just gonna go ahead and hop right to it and get to cutting out the fabric. So for today's fabric cutting, we have the fabric folded hot dog style to make sure everything is directional and exactly the way I want it. So that way all the strawberries are facing up, down, I don't know what you wanna call it. They're hanging as opposed to defying gravity. So I am just basically putting pattern pieces down as I see fit. I'm not stressed about having enough fabric for this pattern. I have, I think about three quarters yard technically more than I need, which should more than cover the directionality of the print. As you can see, I'm under strict supervision by my cat, Spooky. She was very, very intrigued and involved in the cutting process. She's been kind of intense about the cutting process lately. She seems to see it as quality time, but also like nap time. I don't know, it's a mood. It's a mood I could live without admittedly, but she's the cutest boss I could ask for. This was pretty straightforward. I did get some new shears that cut this fabric like butter and cutting a non-slippery fabric for once was really quite a treat. So overall, this was not too bad to cut at all. Good morning, it is the next day. I finished cutting the fabric, which was pretty straightforward. I always forget you can fold like, Kind of like paper where there's like hamburger and hot dog. I always forget you can fold a hot dog and that it makes it way easier to work with patterns that are upright like that. So I did that. It wasn't too bad. Pretty quick. I also haven't worked with this dirty cotton in a little bit and I forgot how easy they are to cut. And then I'm also going back and forth. I really should do bound buttonholes on this one, but honestly, like I don't want to because there's so many buttonholes, but I think I'm going to muster through and I'm going to do the bound buttonholes. And if I do bound buttonholes, I feel less strongly about needing interfacing. So it has pros and cons, I guess, even though interfacing takes way less time. But otherwise, this is a really straightforward pattern and I'm not particularly concerned with getting this done basically on the timeline I want. Um, I have two days to work on this one. And so I think today, Day. We're gonna take it pretty chill and we're just gonna get the main part of the dress assembled and then my goal tomorrow will just be to put on the sleeves and the collar and probably like the final buttons or whatever. I feel like that's just the easiest thing to do. I think that's it. It's that it feels like that's like hardly anything, but it'll be good. It'll give me like half days of sewing instead. Yeah, spooky. More time for attention for the cat. With that, let's go ahead and hop into the sewing. Spooky. Today I am starting by showing you the threading of my machine. This is always the beginning of any project. And I'm also gonna take this opportunity to real quick talk to you about the fact that your quality of thread matters. I bought this thread, it was cheap, and I really paid for it. And the fact I had to really clean out my machine at the end of this project, there was just like little green fuzz everywhere, which means it's deep in my machine. This is why it's really important to buy quality thread. If there is one thing you're not going to scrimp on, 
ideally it is thread. First, I am starting by sewing up the front just because these are just slightly more complicated than the back panels and take a little bit more brain power, so I figured I'd get them out of the way. First, I am just starting with sewing the main front piece to like the side bottom front piece. Here, I am just taking the time and sewing those together, as well as getting the gathers in for where the bust needs to gather. Those are going in these pieces that kind of look like big pockets, but they're pockets for your boobs. For the finishing of this seam, I am going with the classic old school method of pinking. This is a really dense cotton, so I'm not too worried about fraying, so pinking is a great option. And then here I am just ironing and prepping this area for the bust piece to go in. So I have ironed everything down and now I'm just clipping things so they'll lie a little bit nicer and flatter before pinning the bust piece in finally. This is actually gonna be top stitched down and also making sure to get the gathers right at the end of this, I'm not quite sure I'm happy with how the gathers turned out, but they work and they do the job, so that's okay. And then here I am actually top stitching it. The reason I'm using this dark green thread is because you should always go dark with your top stitching, just because it being a lighter color than the rest of the fabric will really make it stand out. And that is definitely true here because this isn't that noticeable. And here I am picking out those stitches I used to put in the gathers. I have started to do this as I go, as opposed to doing it all at the end, just so I don't spend like so much time sitting there and having all I'm doing be pulling out basting stitches. And then here you can see me just folding over and sewing the edge of the facing. The way this pattern is designed, the facing just folds over onto itself. This is pretty standard for a collared pattern. This hasn't really changed that much throughout the decades. I think this starts to change about 60s, 70s, but this doesn't surprise me. This is the method they use in the late 30s. And with that all done, it is time to face what I've been dreading, bound buttonholes. So the first thing I have done here is I have put on interfacing onto the fabric so the like mouths of the buttonholes will stay nice and firm. And then I am just cutting out rectangles with pinking shears that I know will cover the amount of the buttonhole. And then after I have cut all those out, I am getting ready to mark them. I'm first measuring my button and adding a quarter inch to the length. And then from there, I'm first gonna start by drawing a line that is the length of the button with two clear stopping points. And then from there, I'm going to draw the length of the button plus the quarter inch. This is just a straight line that is ideally along the grain. And then after that, I am just drawing these boxes with the slash down, ideally the center. They do not look very centered in these. I'm really bad at this part of the project, but honestly, I'm okay with my bound buttonholes not being perfect because I don't enjoy doing them. So as long as they are functional, that's all that matters to me. And then from there, I am just pinning these in to where the buttonholes are marked on this pattern. I am only pinning these in the front not in the facing. The facing will be a whole separate process that I do at the end. And then I am also making sure all of these are in the same direction print wise so we don't have any funny business. And then after I've done that, I am just going around these rectangles with my thread. One of the reasons I don't stress about all of my rectangles being the same is I actually count each stitch. As I go, I think these were 13 wide by four tall. So that's how I know they're the same even if my measuring was questionable. And then from there, I match up the corners of the rectangles using my pins, fold it, cut a slit down the center, and then kind of make a little letter shape with my snips. This just helps everything turn and to not have any weird corners. I will say, I think this is the most successful set of bound buttonholes I've done purely from the fact that, that the corners are not wrinkled or weird in any way, shape, or form. So I'm quite pleased with these. And then after you cut these out, you then turn the fabric into the inside and you use the flaps to kind of like push it together and give you the little bound buttonhole shape, kind of like the lips of the button. And then from there, I go ahead and I pin this down from the front to sew the corners so that way they are officially all ready to go. And then here I am actually sewing it. I 
am just going backwards and forward and backwards and forward and backwards and, and forward. It's like the quarter inch um, sides, the small sides of the rectangles. Um, this just secures everything down. And when you do this, you need to make sure the fabric underneath is laying nice and flat. If you don't, you might accidentally be making your bound buttonhole much harder to cut through. And then after these are all sewn, I am just cutting around the edges with my pinking shears again, and I'm just getting rid of a lot of excess fabric. After that, I am pinning together the back three panels. This is a center panel and two side panels to get it ready to sew to the front. And then after that is sewn, I am pinning the front side to the back side. Everything's matching up and looking great. And then I am just sewing that. And that finishes up the rest of my day. So I accomplished my goals with plenty of time to do other things in the day. Good morning. So last night I finished everything I wanted to. It definitely took more time than I assumed it would because I went to try the garment on after sewing it all up and it was way too small. A 1930s 12 is definitely smaller than a 1940s or 1950s 12 and it like doesn't it count for a butt, which makes sense when you think about the silhouette that was popular in the day. So this one is definitely like not quite my size. However, I went and I re-sewed the seams about one eighth of an inch back, which got me about a whole nother inch around or an inch and a half. It might still not be enough. We'll see. So yeah, I think I can still totally salvage this and it's going to be fine, but it is a little bit discouraging. I'm a little bummed, but it's really cute. I really like the cut otherwise, and I do really think I can salvage this. And in the future, I just need to note that I need to cut everything with about another quarter to half inch seam allowance. Oh, I do have the garment here. It's looking really good. This pattern, I cut it to the short length and it's so long still. Today I just have to put on the collar and the sleeves, hem it, do the back side of the bound buttonholes, and sew on the buttons. So that, that's all I have to do today, which still seems kind of like a lot, especially since these sleeves have three pieces to them, which is the most pieces I've ever had a sleeve have. Those will be really interesting to muddle through. The collar looks pretty straightforward. It is, I'll point out, it has some interesting construction features, both the collar and then yeah, the sleeves are wild. So we're gonna walk through all of that today. And with that, let's go ahead and hop to my sewing machine. All right, so today the first thing I am focusing on is the collar. I'm going to be doing this unit by unit, starting with the collar, going with the sleeves, and then going with the pockets. So that is what we're doing today for the collar. I am first just starting by pinning them together and sewing along the like round sides and leaving the side that goes by the neck open. And then I am just sewing those down and then clipping all of those round corners so that way they'll press nice and neatly. And from there, I am using my pressing tool to get all those little nooks and crannies out before then ironing them down and into place. For the collar, it's important to have kind of one side be nicer than the other because that's the side that's gonna be facing up. In this case, I decided which side that was by first placing it on my dress to see where I, and how I wanted the strawberries to fit. I wanted the strawberries to follow the direction of the dress with them going downward in the back as opposed to upward uh, or being upside down and so I figured that out and then we were good to go. Everything for the collar worked out. I am just pinning one side down on the neck. This is actually some interesting construction. I start doing it wrong because this is usually the way most patterns have you do it, where you sew it to the correct side and then you're gonna hand stitch the inside with bias binding. However, this is one of the differences between a late 30s patterns and the rest of the patterns in my collection. They actually have you sew it to the inside so then when the collar is popped up and out, the uh, um, hand stitching is actually under the collar where you can't see it and you have a nice clean finish on the inside of the garment where you see the collar more, if that makes sense. I feel like it's a very confusing thing to explain, um, but it is a different way of constructing a collar and was quite enjoyable to learn a different way and I definitely think I prefer this. And then here I am actually sewing that down. This is always a little bit tricky because you're trying to get everything smooth and flat and not accidentally sew down the other side of the collar that is supposed to be loose and free. So with the collar done, we can now move around to the sleeves. I have already completed one sleeve off camera. Since I got one done successfully, I will now show you the exact process. First, I am going to take this sleeve and I am going to baste the top and the like little bottom thing I showed you. And then once those are basted, they are ready to be gathered down to fit into the spot that they're supposed to. This is really interesting because basically those slits that are cut there are going to be what covers up the edge 
of the gathering. You can kind of see what I'm talking about here being pinned in, um, but basically you fold over the edge, their finished edge, and then you're just pinning them down, um, and then eventually that will also be kind of covered with a facing. Here I feel like I'm showing you a clearer picture. You can see where I'm actually stitching down that little feature with a top stitch. And then while I'm at my sewing machine, I am quickly stitching down a quarter inch of the facing to give it a clean edge. This sleeve facing is by far the weirdest facing I've ever seen. It's like this little half oval, and it of course fits perfectly with the pattern, but it wasn't what I was expecting. And it was just a little weird to sew down because I feel like this requires really precise cutting for, for everything to turn out okay and for no raw edges to show. I managed to make it work, however, I would not say it's like as pristine as it could be. And then here I have sewn it and I am just getting it ready to press by making sure the outside edge is really, really nice and clean and the inside edge can be more debatable. And now that that is all pressed and ready to go, I'm going to real quick just sew it all down with some hand stitching. And with that being done, I am now just gathering down the sleeve head where it tells me to. I am matching all of my marks to get the proper puff. And then I'm just easing that into like the sleeve part of the dress. And we're getting close to being finished with the sleeve. And then here I'm sewing the sleeve in. I am just going around the circle. I don't actually use the sleeve thing on my machine that much because it's usually too wide for like the narrowness of older pattern styled sleeves. So I'm just trying to make sure to remember to take out my pins because they're a huge pain in the butt when you're sewing a sleeve like this. And I'm just trying to make sure none of my fabric that is on the bodice of the dress wrinkles and the gathers stay only in the sleeve. And then after that, I am sewing what they call the sleeve stiffener. This is supposed to make the puff go better and it's basically an oval folded in half and then sewn down. Here I am inserting that stiffener. I also put in some gathering stitches because this helps it fit correctly and add that volume. This piece from my understanding is supposed to just help your sleeve help your sleeve be stiffer. I do know that sometimes in later decades they have you make these out of tool. There was no mention of tool in this pattern, however, and I actually liked using the plain old cotton for this because I felt like it gave me the stiffness I needed without the irritation of tool against my skin. So this was a really cool technique and I it was great to learn. And then when I sewed it in, I just sewed it an eighth of an inch away from the the edge of the stitching that I actually put the sleeve in so that way you can't see it on the outside at all. And from here we are getting close to the end. I am working on a pocket here. I've already folded over one of the edges and sewn it down to give me a finished edge. And then here I am doing the perimeter of the pocket where you just fold it over and baste it around so it is all set down and ready for you to actually sew it to the garment itself because you will top stitch that. From here I have taken that pocket and I am folding the edge where they tell me to so that way I have that nice thick clean edge on the the top of my pocket and none of the inside shows when I'm wearing the garment and I am just hand stitching that down. They don't explicitly say to do this in the pattern but I've learned from experience. It's the better thing to do so that way like if you have something in your pocket and you're pulling it out it can't get caught up in that fold. And then from here I am just putting the pocket according to where the markings on the back of the dress tell me to. So I'm just gonna pin that down and then I'm gonna top stitch around it and I have my final pocket all ready to go. From here, I am going ahead and doing some hand stitching. So here I am stitching down all of the facings that go over where the buttonholes are. This is just a step to get things ready for when I put in the buttons and do everything else to finish the garment. I'm mainly doing this because I want to be able to get the hem in. And then after that is done, I turn my focus to the hem. First, I am just folding it over by a quarter inch and sewing it down to get another finished edge. And then I'm using a hemming method I learned recently from a pattern that is running gathering stitches up at the top of the hem and then gathering and easing it in to get a really really smooth and beautifully curved hem down at the bottom of the dress. This is now my go-to way for gathering dresses that have kind of that circularity or roundness. It's a bunch of extra 
extra steps, but the hem comes out so clean, it is worth it. Ever since I learned this trick, I actually end up with circular hems I'm happy with, and I definitely was never happy with my circular hems before this. And now with that done, I am going to hand sew down around the bottom. I am just doing one of the stitches that I don't know what it's called, but you just pick up one stitch on the front and do the bulk of your stitching on the back. And here I am finally tackling the backside of these bound buttonholes. So what I'm doing is I am cutting that weird envelope shape again, but in the back, and then I'm folding all of those edges down and then whip stitching around them to keep them anchored. And this gives you a nice clean finish on the inside of your bound buttonholes. Uh, but it is tedious, and one of the reasons I don't enjoy doing bound buttonholes is it feels like the steps are endless. However, they are worth it. They wash way better and just work better than machine stitched buttonholes. So I will try not to be too bitter. And now we are getting to the final touches for this garment. I'm really excited. So the first thing I'm doing here is I'm fastening on the button. And then the last thing I'm doing is I am going to sew down all of the lace. It's really interesting because once you get in the seventies, they have you like sandwich your lace in between the collar like you would have done that way at the beginning um, but in the 40s they actually usually have you sew the lace down afterwards by hand so that way you can take it off to wash it if it's fragile or delicate or you can take it off to change the look of your garments they use their garments a lot longer there and so they wanted more options of how to switch up their original garment so i always think that's a really cool thing that you see in older patterns that once you hit about the 70s you no longer tend to see but with that, I am now ready for the reveal and I can't wait for you to see this dress. You have seen the reveal. I absolutely love this dress, but before we jump into anything else, let's jump into how much it costs to make this dress. All right, let's get to it. So the cost of this fabric was $57.06. I think this was four yards of fabric. And then the pattern, I'm pretty shocked the pattern was only $24, which is pretty wild considering it being such an early pattern, but I'm more than happy to pay that price. That was a good price on that pattern. Notions wise, about $15, that counts the thread, the lace, and the buttons. So that brings us to supplies total of $96.06, which is really cheap, honestly, for a dress as high quality as this. I have really noticed a difference since I started buying more high quality fabrics. It just feels better from a sensory perspective for me. And then now to the very expensive part, the labor. I spent 10 and a half hours on this project, which is actually a short project for me, which is interesting. However, that multiplied by $25 an hour, which is about the rate of a seamstress in Seattle on the job postings I've seen, you get $262.50, which brings the grand total of this to $358.56, which is quite expensive still for a dress. We're looking at almost $400. Um, so that wraps this up. I'm pretty pleased with the supplies cost of this dress since I'm not paying for my labor, but uh, it is a good reminder that clothing is expensive. So with that, let's go ahead and head back over to the wrap up.
Now that we've done that, let's talk more about the project itself. I have the dress here. I've worn it to work actually today. It's the very end of my work day. I just changed into this top. I really, really like this pattern. I think it turned out really cute and it's also really comfortable. Like I wasn't dying to take it off at the end of the day. I probably could have worn it longer. The sleeves weren't too tight. The shoulders weren't too restricted. Everything fit wise was pretty good with this dress. The one thing which you can see it in the reveal too is it kind of like gauges and does weird things here. So I'm just gonna put some snaps so it at least lays flat. I don't think I even have like anything about this that I would change. I love the buttons. I really like the lace I chose and the lace placement. I didn't put it on the sleeves because it was going to be too itchy and that was definitely the right call because the sleeves were nice. I absolutely love this fabric. I feel really cute in this dress. Collar lays really nice which it did do that different um, sewing technique than what I'm used to sewing for a collar. So it's interesting to see how much nicer this lays for me than a lot of the collars I do using a more modern technique. The sleeves, they were like a weird experience to make, but now that I've made them, I'll definitely be sticking these on random things because I really like the shape of them. Was the biggest reason I chose this pattern. I think this is the first project in a long time, if ever, actually this might be my first project that I don't feel like there was something I could have done better. So I feel like really shows to my growth as a seamstress because this was a brand new pattern the first time I did it. And yeah, I think everything turned out pretty much perfect. And the last thing is, is I'm really pleased since this is the earliest pattern I've ever made. Honestly, only probably by two years since this was a pattern from 1938. And I think I've made stuff from like 40 and 42. It wasn't that much earlier, but still, I feel rather accomplished for this being the first pattern I've ever made that, that is that old. And the fact that it wasn't hard and I had everything I needed because it's not like they put an extra instructions in this because the older, sewing pattern I've learned the less instructions it has <laughs> we're gonna go ahead and wrap this up definitely subscribe and stick around if you haven't already I have really great sewing projects coming up we're gonna do I think six weeks in a row of sewing projects for October so definitely stay tuned for that and otherwise you can always like this video or leave a comment down below both really help me in the algorithm and hopefully I will see you next time bye